MLB wants to change some things about the game, and the Players Association, and they really have a, a very um, nasty relationship right now. They're not happy with each other. Uh, but they have, they have come back with their own thoughts. So Joel Sherman in the Post kind of laid it out, and Jeff Passan, uh, our very own, also has laid it out. I'm reading from Joel's story. This is one of the big things. Forcing pitchers to face at least three batters within an inning. The union recommended implementing it in the minors this year and the majors in 2020. According to Joel, the union probably comfortable with this proposal because with the great use of relievers now, the single batter reliever has been phased out. Because you can't have a guy out there to just face one guy. I don't love this, but it will speed up the game. The pace of the game where you can't bring in a guy just to get one out and then bring in another guy to get another out. The guy's got to be in there for three outs. And it also puts a premium on pitchers that can get everybody out. And let's just look at the Yankees, for instance. I don't think it hurts them at all. None of their guys are the type of guys that can only get out the like side batter. So Boone has to bring in Adovino to get three batters. He'll get three batters. Same but, thing with Batanza. Same thing with so, Britton. But if the argument is they're being phased out anyway, then why do you even have to implement the rule? But people still do it. Yeah, but if it's being phased out, it just seems a little silly to now go the other extreme where it's probably not going to exist anymore anyway and doesn't really happen all that often to now I'm going to be forced to keep in a guy for three. Not two, now it's three. So basically, the, the, in essence, is you're hoping that he you know, retires the side and it's kind of like one inning. But and, and also, I don't know, it's just weird. As I was driving in, I thought of a way to get around this. Let's say you bring in Britain to get a left-hander. Then the next batter is a big right-handed batter. Now, Britain could get out righties, but Boone wants to bring in Batances to get the right-hander. So he tells Britain, here's what you do. You get out the, uh, the left-hander, and then something hurts in your side. Your back hurts. I got to take out. What do they do then? If a pitcher leaves with an injury. In a big game. I'm not saying you do this in an April game. How could you stop that? You can't. You, you can't. can't legislate it. You can't. I mean, it's... I, it, 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 this is almost very reminiscent to me of the, the automatic base on balls, like the intentional walk. Like, did you really save all that much time? Just seems like a rule that's really... How often... There's no more Tony Fossus anymore. They got to come face one guy. That doesn't... They, they admitted that it's being phased out, so why do you even have to do it in the first place? Limiting mound visits. <sighs> MLB wants to go from six, which was installed last year, to four, and then three in 2020. Union proposed six to five this year, and then if games are slower in 2019 than in 2018, MLB would be within its rights to go down to four. They put the six visits in, Don. I don't, I don't remember one game where it became an issue. Not one. Honestly, I don't remember it being an issue. So that served its purpose, because Gary Sanchez would go out 13 times a game. So you did stop that? Yes, that you stopped. So that worked. I don't know if cutting it down to three is the answer. No. Pitch clock. This is a no-brainer. And it shouldn't be called a pitch clock because it seems like the onus is always on the pitchers. The batters are just as much at fault. A pitch must be delivered in 20 seconds. Batter can't keep stepping out. If he steps out with 20 seconds into the, the, before the, the, since the final pitch, he gets called a strike. It get a, a strike on them. But that rule's in place right now, Don. You always say this, and they don't enforce it. No, because what, what are the punishment for, for it? Now, that sounds like there's going to be a punishment, that, that it would be a, a strike. If he's not in the batter's box then, and he's not ready to receive a pitch, then it would be a strike. At least there's a punishment to it now, not a suggestion like it was before. Number four, and this is the big one, DH installed in the National League. I think this is the one that's going to be met with a lot of resistance from purists. But I just think it's inherently unfair to American League teams in World Series games and interleague games to have their pitchers do something they never do. Now, should they be able to do it? Yes. But they haven't been asked to do it in almost three decades. More than three decades. Here's my problem, Don. In fairness to National League teams, you cannot implement this on February 6th. They have not built teams with de designated hitters. No, this has to be something you say starting 2020. Right, and for the Mets it would be a home run. Because all of a sudden, yeah. those last three years of Robinson Cano don't seem as bad. But isn't that kind of what you want to do? 
Like the DH extended careers. We got to see Dave Winfield longer. We got to see Don Baylor longer. Maybe we would have seen National League guys longer had the DH been in place. And here what I would, here's what I would say to the purists. I get it that there was a distinct difference between the American League and the National League, the way the game was played. If you remember, the umpires were, were different. You had American League umpires. You had National League umpires. For the uh, people that aren't old enough to remember, Peter may not even remember this, that there was a time where the American League umpires actually had the shield, where the National League umpires had the chest protector underneath their jersey. The American League umpires actually had that big pillow in front of them. Remember that? Yep. And because of that, the feeling was they couldn't see the low strike. So in the American League, the strike zone was completely different. So there was a two distinct differences. And there was no interleague play, so they never played until they got to the World Series. Now they play each other every day because of the odd number of teams, right? They play each other every day. There are no more American League and National League managers. All the managers are in both leagues. The only difference between the two leagues now, the only difference is the DH. Why? Why? It extends careers. You're trying to promote offense. So other than the rare occasion where Bartolo Colon actually entertained us when he got to the plate, how is it still a thing? How, why does it make any sense? And the money that you're investing in these pitchers, do I want to spend all this money on a pitcher for him to break his ankle rounding second base? Or do what happened to Tanaka, where he ends up like tearing both of his hamstrings running from third to third how, how about Chim Ming Wong? Chim Ming Wong's career. a good one. Uh, he did his pettit this time in Houston, I remember, when Jacob they were national. Jacob DeGrom hitting last year hurt his uh, elbow. Uh, absolutely. Michael, I do believe these guys should be more athletic. All right? I do think it's a joke that Tanaka can't run from third to home to try to get a run. And, have to, and tear both of his hamstrings. It seems silly. But you know what? It exists. And the way we protect these pitchers. So let me get this straight. You won't let them throw one more pitch than they're supposed to. But you let them run the bases. Come on. Really? It's crazy. You, you let them face a 100-mile-per-hour fastball where they can be like David Cohn and break a finger. You Come treat, on. You treat them throughout their career. As delicately as you would they're treat wearing jackets. a Fabergé It's 85 egg. degrees. They're wearing jackets on the base bat. Come on. Another one. And this is the union trying to combat tanking. Union proposed that any team that lost 90 more games in consecutive years would drop 15 places in the June draft and have its international pool money reduced by $2 million. If it occurred for three straight years, draft position would drop 20 places and $3 million would be taken away in international money. In addition, the union recommended restructuring revenue sharing to give more money to low-revenue teams that are succeeding in the win-loss column. See, if you're willing to do that last part, then why not reward the best team to miss the playoffs with the first overall pick? All these sports should do it. Why does it have to be the worst team? Listen, if you don't know what you're doing, why should you be rewarded with the best player? You're probably going to screw it up anyway. Well, how about the, 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 last, the last team in? The second wild card team should get the first pick. At least they tried. Yeah, but they, but they got the benefit of being in the wild card, and we've seen wild card teams win World Series before, so that should be the motivation ultimately. Right, but right? it's not. But the team that misses out. But now it would be under my system. All these sports should do it. NBA, NHL, you know more tanking. The, the best team not to make the playoffs gets the first overall pick. And the reason this would be so fascinating is teams that are lousy would be making trades at the deadline to get better so they can move up to get a better pick. You're motivating teams to try. It makes perfect sense to me, especially in baseball when you have so many rounds and there's, it's sometimes indistinguishable the difference between the first overall pick and the 50th overall pick. The best teams that don't make the playoffs get the, and, and if they happen to sneak into the playoffs, all the better. Motivate teams to win. Try to win. Make trades to win. It would make the trading deadline more interesting. It would make the season more interesting. Teams that are out of it would give you a reason to go out there and root for them to win games. It's a perfect solution. Now, as a way to control uh, combat service time um, games, which you know teams keep strong prospects down to impact when they could uh, begin arbitration of free agency, mm -hmm. Union proposed that a first-year player would be awarded a full year of service if you were top three in Rookie of the Year, MVP, Cy Young, or the Rivera-Hoffman Relief Awards. Was the LCS or World Series MVP or led a league in wins above replacement based on a blend of formulas? I don't think the owners will go for that. Uh, as a way to improve the game, 
experience for fans, Union offered to allow more players in dugouts to be mic'd and have two-way mics between players so that in-game conversations can be heard by fans. I like that. And the Union proposed having a single trade deadline as early as before the All-Star game as a way to force teams to try to win early and not sell off late. Currently, non-waiver deadline is July 31st. Waiver deadline is August 31st. Now, here's the part I love. There are also re recommendations for the studying the lowering of the mound, which I hate. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you want, 500 runs a game scored? Expanding the rosters to 26, which I love, in exchange for September lowering to 28. There you go. A 40-man roster in September is one of the great derelictions of duty to what the sport's about. And they say allowing major league contracts to amateur two-sports athletes, such as Kyler Murray. I don't like that, because there's going to be a guy who said, by the way, I was on the tennis team. Yeah, yeah but we, do you, you, that's, that's, right. that's impossible. So I wouldn't um, do that. What I don't understand about the uh, expansion of the rosters, <clears throat> expand the rosters, but have, have healthy scratches. You expand the you you could expand the roster, but you're still only allowed to dress the 25, right? Yeah. Why do teams get this influx of talent at the time when it's it's supposed to be a war of attrition, right? Why do I get all these fresh arms in September when I'm supposed to be battling to try to show you that I'm stronger than you with what I had at the beginning of the year? So bring these guys up because the minor league season's over. They need something to do, and they can play. But it's going to come at the expense of somebody else. Do it like hockey. You have a roster, but you know what? You're only allowed to dress. In hockey, it's 20. Baseball, you can have a 25 or even expand it to 28 if you want. But to have 50 guys in the dugout, all of them eligible to play at the time of the year when these games are the most important, that makes zero sense. It, it's terrible. It, it really is because there are teams that are playing for something. And you could look at the Red Sox the year that Terry Francona got fired. You know, they were playing the Orioles. And and the Orioles, you know, the Bucks running pitcher after pitcher out of there. I mean, a good manager is going to be able to take advantage of a 16-man bullpen. Another one of the proposals I, I read, they want the bullpen to be limited to 12. I love that, too. And that maybe would stop all the nonsense with starters or openers or whatever the case may be.